Hello and welcome to this module on distillation curves and petroleum cuts. What we're going to talk about today is introduce distillation of petroleum fractions. And a petroleum fraction is a material like gasoline or diesel that is made up of a bunch of different molecules uh, that fall within a given boiling range. And so we're going to talk about what happens when we start to boil that material and try to distill it. And by doing so, what we'll do is we'll lay the foundations for more advanced discussions on distillation uh, in the future. And so let's get started. Let's talk about a simple distillation apparatus. And this apparatus will be similar to a D86 distillation uh, apparatus. And there's a video that I'll post in the comment section of this video that will show you what that distillation process looks like. It was made by uh, students in our process plant technology program. And what that apparatus looks like is we start with a boiling flask that looks like this. And we fill it with a hydrocarbon, a hydrocarbon sample, maybe gasoline, maybe diesel, something like that. And then in the top, we're going to put a cork with a thermometer that reaches down in there. We'll have a temperature indicator for our thermometer. And off the side, what we do is we have an arm that comes off this boiling flask. And what we'll do is we'll run that through some ice and then out. And so this cools. A cooling coil. And then what we'll do is we'll collect the material in a graduated cylinder. And what's interesting about this process is if we put 100 milliliters into our flask, which is normal, when we boil the hydrocarbon out of this boiling flask and we collect it in the graduated cylinder, we can measure two things. We can measure how many milliliters showed up here, and we can measure the temperature at the time that we recovered a certain amount of milliliters of material. And that really is the core of measuring a distillation curve. And so if we come down and talk about what that distillation curve would look like, it looks like this. We're going to have an axis on the left and a horizontal axis. And that horizontal axis is going to be percent evaporated. And that's very simply taken from our graduated cylinder. So if we put in 100 milliliters, if we boiled off 50 milliliters, we boiled off 50%. If we boiled off 10 milliliters, we would have boiled off 10%. And so this ranges from 0 to 100. And then on the vertical axis, this is temperature. And we'll just call that degrees Fahrenheit. And that's not the best degrees Fahrenheit. So let me put a better one on there, degrees Fahrenheit. And that can be uh, a wide range of things, but let's say we start at 65 and we go all the way to 430. And those temperatures are significant because that is the kind of classic distillation temperature for gasoline. And if we did that experiment, the D86 experiment on the last graph uh, with the boiling flask, and we measured what gasoline's boiling curve looked like, it would look something like this. And what that tells us is that when we put the heat into that boiling flask and it just started to boil, it would just, the first drop that we saw fall into that graduated cylinder, the temperature on that temperature probe would be about 65 degrees right here. Um, and so you can see the cursor. When that reads about 65 degrees, someplace between 65 and 100 degrees, we would see that the first drop of gasoline fell into our graduated cylinder. And then what would happen is, is we kept putting heat on this boiling flask 
the temperature would keep increasing, keep increasing, keep increasing. We would continue to get liquid dropping into our graduated cylinder. When the graduated cylinder was at almost 100 milliliters and the boiling flask was almost completely empty, what we would find is that the vapors at the therm uh, thermometer would be right around 430 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite hot. Um, there's some special terminology we should talk about. This temperature here, 65 degrees Fahrenheit at the beginning of the distillation curve, we would call that the initial boiling point. And so that's the boiling point where it just started to vaporize and started to come over to the top of the boiling flask and into the graduated cylinder. The temperature that boiling is done at when we've boiled everything over is called the final boiling point or FBP. So the initial boiling point and the final boiling point. If we were going to carry this analogy just one step further we don't need to put something like gasoline pure in there or diesel pure in there. We could put a mixture of those two things in there. For example, and let me come down just a hair more here. If I drew another distillation curve similar to the last one, we're going to have percent evaporated or sometimes you will see the term percent off. And that is always going to go from 0 to 100 percent. And then over here we're going to have our degrees Fahrenheit. Now diesel is a little different. Diesel boils from about 430 to 650. And so if I made this graph similar, I'm going to start at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put a temperature point in here at about 430. And then I'll put another one in here at 650. If I put pure diesel in our boiling flask and we boil that, we would get a curve that looked something. It would start at 430 and on this curve, because it's wide and narrow, might look something like that. If I put gasoline in there, and I'll change to a green pen for gasoline, it would start at 65 degrees Fahrenheit and it would go to maybe around 430, something like that. Um, and so this is gasoline and yellow is diesel. I could put a mixture of gasoline and diesel in that boiling flask at the same time. And if I did that, what would happen is the first molecules would start to boil at 65 because those are the molecules that were in the gasoline that started boiling at 65. And then it would go like this, but it would stop boiling at about 650 because those were the heaviest molecules in the boiling flask and those were the molecules that were the heavy molecules in diesel. We could come over at 430 which is the split between gasoline and diesel and we would come up with a percent and it, on this graph it looks like it might be around 70 and what we can determine by looking at that curve is that the mixture we put in that boiling flask uh, when it was a mix of gasoline and diesel that there was about 70 percent of it that boiled bef below 430 or 70 percent of it was gasoline and 30 percent of it boiled above 430 or boiled in the diesel range and so that is the power of a distillation curve is it tells us where the molecules boiled in a sample and there are a lot of things that make gasoline gasoline. For example, its octane rating and drivability index and vapor pressure. But there is probably no parameter that defines the difference between gasoline and diesel and kerosene more so than the distillation curve of those samples. That's all I have for this uh, video and uh, we'll pick it up in the next video and we'll talk a little bit about another way to visualize a barrel of oil and the different components in that barrel.